Um, Mr. C. Kyung, uh, I have a question about um, about how you know the Tibetan uh, government in exile always says that their goal is either in independence or a middle way path. I'm curious on how you plan on achieving that. Good question. Now, since we came into the government on May 27, 2021. We have to follow the middle way policy because that is the official policy of the Tibetan government in exile. Okay, and this is laid where we have we went through a process of referendum first, but we didn't have to conduct the referendum before the referendum. We organized an opinion poll where the majority of the Tibetans say that we will follow whatever His Holiness decides. So in 1997, the parliament passed a unanimous resolution regarding that, that whatever His Holiness decides based on the international situation, based on the situation inside China, and based on situation in Tibet, whatever decision His Holiness takes, we will follow that. So His Holiness reiterated that he will persist with the middle way policy. Now when you say middle way, it's a Buddhist concept right so there is the middle so when you say middle you have two extremes so the one extreme is the historical status of tibet as an independent state and the other extreme is the present situation of tibet under the repressive chinese communist government so we are trying to find the middle way which is more akin to autonomy so the autonomy also, there are so many different kinds of autonomous arrangements around the world which is not the same. One autonomous arrangement is not the same as another. So here in Canada also you see Quebec as an autonomous state. You see Nunavut also as an autonomous state. But those two are different. Even in Canada, you have asymmetrical autonomy, not symmetrical. Right? That do you do? Um, now, officially, we follow the middle way. And what this 16th cabinet, which I lead right now, decided is to change the strategy. Policy is same, middle way, right? When you talk about the middle, if you don't have this extreme, if there is no recognition for the historical status, then there's no middle way, because you're removing one extreme. Then it has to be another middle, right? The Hindu Sambalam, we need to focus on the historical status of Tibet. Right? So that is why we are able to bring both independence advocates and middle advocates together. So even independent advocates, to seek independence in future, you have to prove the independent status of Tibet in the past, right? So for middle way also, we are focusing on the historical status to gain leverage for the middle way. So that's why I keep telling governments that if you keep repeating this statement that Tibet is part of PRC, then you are going against international law. Because whether it's happening to Ukraine today, or whether it happened to Tibet 70 plus years ago, it was the same international law after the formation of United Nations, right? So use of force or aggression to invade another place is not allowed in international law. So Tibet was also aggressively invaded by the Chinese, so it should be null and void under international law, one thing. Then, I carry these two books, today I don't have that, Michael's book and Lao's book, because Michael Van Walt Van Prague has written this book called Tibet Brief 2020. Please read that book, right, if you want to understand Tibet. And he looks at it from a legal perspective, because he's an expert on international law. And he worked with some hundred scholars from around inner Asia, surrounding Tibet, not just looking at Tibetan history or Chinese history, but he worked with some hundred scholars from inner Asia and came out with this book saying that whether it's Tibet-Mongol relation, Tibet-Ming relation, Tibet-Qing relation, or as per international law today, 
Tibet has never been considered part of China. Now there is another Chinese professor called Professor Lao. When he was young, when he was going through his university days, he was always intrigued by this question as to why Chinese government is asking every government to say Tibet is part of PRC if Tibet had already been part of China. Even as a Chinese, he started thinking about this. And after he finished his uh, professorship, he retired. And then he looked at imperial Chinese historical records published by the Communist Party on their website. And he downloaded all those documents. And now he has come up with a book that argues against the Chinese government that they, if you consider the Manchus and the Mongols also as Chinese, because there are a lot of academic discourses as to who is a real Chinese. Are the Mongols Chinese? Tibetans Chinese? Manchus Chinese? If the Mongols are Chinese, then they can claim half of the world because Genghis Khan invaded that much or Kublai Khan invaded that much of the world, right? So, Lao, Professor Lao proves that according to imperial Chinese historical records, imperial China has never considered Tibet as part of China. It's a very powerful argument coming from a Chinese based on imperial Chinese historical records. So these two are the weapons I carry with me to give it to the foreign officers and tell them, read these books, then make your statement. Don't parrot what Chinese government wants you to say that Tibet is part of PRC, Tibet is part of PRC. And the second thing we pointed out to them is, on the one hand, you keep saying Tibet is part of PRC, and then on the other hand, they keep saying, oh, we support negotiation between the Chinese government and the representatives of His Holiness Dalai Lama. And we tell them these two don't go together. It contradicts each other. Because China rules Tibet with an iron hand, right? And the whole international community keeps saying Tibet is part of China, Tibet is part of PRC. Then where is the reason for China to come and talk to us? And the third point we tell them is, why do you think Chinese government is asking other governments to say Tibet is part of PRC? Why they are not asking other governments to say East Turkestan is part of PRC, is Mongolia is part of PRC, or Manchuria is part of PRC? Why only Tibet? Because the Chinese government knows that they have no legitimacy of their rule over Tibet. And they are trying to seek that legitimacy from the international community. So I, had, I keep saying I have four reasons why we focus on historical status of Tibet. One is to send a clear message to Chinese government that you cannot distort history. Because history is history. It should be studied by historians and they should decide what Tibet's status was. Right? And the second is to send a message to the international community that you cannot parrot just Chinese government wants you to say. You have to look at the reality of history and then make a statement. And the third reason is for you all. If we Tibetans don't study Tibetan history, who else will study Tibetan history? It should be somebody who really supports Tibet lot of interest on Tibet or you should be a historian studying Tibetan history or the region's history. Otherwise you will not read Tibetan history. Right? You go back home and ask your parents how much do they know about Tibetan history. Now, if the parents don't know, they cannot pass on that legacy to the child. And if you don't know, what will you say to your own children in future about Tibetan history? Then Tibetan history will get lost in the wilderness. 
But then again, you have to look at the practicality of whether that is achievable or not under the present circumstances. Whether you follow middle way or independence, till that stage to prove the historical status of Tibet as an independent state, to gain leverage for middle way, you have to talk about history. And there has to be a lot of causes and conditions to, to, for us to achieve something. So the Hindu, our strategy is to bring all the Tibetans together. Whether you are independence advocate or that is why we created this platform called VTAC, Voluntary Tibet Advocacy Group. I urge you to join this group. Whether you are independent seeker or middle way, it doesn't matter. Right? When you go speak to politicians, when you speak to the m media, when you speak to think tanks, right? did you Tangbo official position the Deshe Gap? what Middle Way is all about, how His Holiness came to this decision, and what, uh, what could be the consequences of this policy. And then you can say, I personally want independence for Tibet. Or Tibetan Youth Congress personally wants independence for Tibet. Doesn't matter. There's no conflict. As long as the messaging is clear that there's no conflict in messaging, it's okay. This is a rather longish because this is an uh, important question which you need to understand because some people feel okay and Sorry, I General, um, but since Tibetan youth, we are like the future generation and the leaders of Tibet. What is your like vision and your like kind of wish for how our rela future relationship with the people of Tibet and with China are? Hmm. <laughs> They are aiming at destroying the identity of the Tibetans, including language. You must have heard about the colonial style boarding schools in Tibet, which is very not exactly the same as the uh, residential schools in for the First Nation people here, but it's very similar, aimed at destroying the identity of the Tibetans. So now in these colonial style boarding schools, they give education in Chinese medium. So you have only four classes on Tibetan in one week, you know, only four hours in one week. And how much can you learn? So the rules say that the, in the nationality regions, the nationality language should be the prime language. But the rules say something and they do something different. How do we preserve our identity? They are doing everything possible to counter that. 
Right? Even tuition classes are not allowed to, to, to be undertaken in Tibetan language during the weekends. It has a lot of other implications, geopolitical security issues for India and all that. But for us as Tibetans, when we travel around the world, I make it a point to meet with the younger generation to tell you how important the Tibetan language is and why you need to study the Tibetan language. This is a reward of the language. The language is a reward Mexican Gionje Pebe Genki Marwa. Canadian Chihone Pebe Genki Wanga, Pebe Rang Pebe Genki or Tendu, Nazugi, Shunge Solea, Nizu Tea, any Nizu Gosebe Tone, any involved Chani, Sosugi Dina Lola, Zuni, that under Shudu Lengunza, we tag that the Zonal Jona, you know what to speak to politicians, you know what to speak to media, you know what to speak to think tanks. If the Sino-Tibet conflict is not resolved immediately, if you look at the policies of Xi Jinping today, it doesn't look very likely that there would be a resolution very soon. But at the same time, we are dealing with the Chinese unofficially. Okay? But what is important is for the diaspora Tibetan community to stay together. Even though we are becoming physically distant, we should be emotionally closer. Right? And Dharamsala is too far away from his, you have to travel half the world. But still, even though we are physically becoming distant, we have to be emotionally close. This year, so if they want to get involved, they have to understand what is going on inside Tibet. They have to understand. That's why I keep reading every night some six, seven, eight articles on China, on Tibet, on international politics that impacts Tibet. As long as you are informed, you are on top of things, then you can talk to people with confidence. Right? Sometimes we believe that, oh, we are too diffident. We think, oh, we, are, we don't know that much. You know? But now I know that I know much more better than many others around the world about Tibet and China that I can tell them what is exactly happening in China or Tibet. Uh, and people are willing to listen. Uh, people are willing to learn from us. Uh, and we should take this opportunity for if you all are informed, well informed about Tibet, then you all become advocates for Tibet. So it's not just only us, myself or Namjela or the Tibetan Association, then every single one of you become ambassadors for Tibetans inside Tibet. And that's how, what we should work for. And you will feel more and more confident. I can stand with any leader in this world, shoulder to shoulder, and speak. Because I know the things, what I'm talking about. If you don't know, then you feel diffident. Confidence ligum in the wa. Because they are not informed about the immediate things that has been happening in Tibet. We are the ones who have this information. And that's how we need to reach out to the world and tell them exactly what's happening and what we want them to do for us. That's why <clears throat> even on this issue of independence middle way, focusing on the historical status just by talking the talk is not enough. But we have to walk the talk. That is why Konamjela has been working along with ICT in, in Washington DC with the US Congress over the last one and a half years. Uh, and we managed to now pass this bill in the House with a super majority of 393 members out of 431 members in the house. Now we have reached halfway. The very reason for me to be here in Toronto today is 
to be in Washington, D.C. on 16th, 15th and 16th to push this bill in the Senate. Once that gets passed in the Senate, first you have to go through the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and then once the Senate Foreign Relations Committee takes a decision, then it goes to the Senate floor. So it's two, two more steps. So if it gets passed in the Senate floor, then it has to go to the President for his accent. Then it becomes a law. So once it becomes a law in the United States, last November, uh, Kohan Amjela and myself and uh, CDC Executive Director Sherab Tharchi, we were all in Ottawa, and uh, we met in two days, we met some 26, 28 members of parliament and four ministers in Ottawa. And I told them, once this bill gets passed in the United States, we are going to come here to push this. Uh, and when we push it here, then we all have to work together. Every single person's effort makes a difference. Okay. Yeah. So we'll have half an hour. Okay, ask those questions. Can't hear me. Okay. Yeah, Pomo. Nang la keje ma di che del tiga yung oda. Ah, chang lo ye ming den den se sang yi. So, go on si kyang la. My question is, um, I know our government and your campaign before um, promoted the middle way, right? But when you go to inter uh, when uh, when you go internationally to talk to government um, government officials. Do you expect them to follow the middle way as well? And if not, or if so, how do you expect them to support um, our Tibetan purpose? Mm. That would be my question. Thank you. So there are two things I always say. When it comes to Sino-Tibet conflict, the resolution can come only by dealing with China. United States cannot give autonomy to the Tibetans. You can't expect NATO to interfere, you know, to seek a resolution for Tibet. So the only way is to deal with the Chinese government. Now, till such a time that we are able to seek a resolution dealing with the Chinese, we have to reach out to the international community. There's no choice, right? When we reach out to the international community, we also have to bear one fact in mind, that everybody is concerned about their national interests. Jacob Su in a Susu Kevin Tamutagri Madoji, Jacob Shamba Kevin Tagamarwa, Pebali in a O Pebanzo Ning Jes and Dijiku Tagamane. First is national interest. Now the thing is, how do we align our interests with that country's interests? So when the aligning, alignment of the interests comes together, then it produces better result. So when we reach out to the Canadian government also, we have to tell them how it benefits the t Canadian government in terms of how we are advocating and what we are telling them. When we reach out to the Americans, we have to tell them how it's important for their national security supporting the Tibetan issue. And when it comes to India also, it's the same thing. Because right now, India has problem with China because China's belligerence on the Indian border is giving a lot of problem for the Indians, right? So we have to align, when we speak to governments, we have to align our interests with their interests to seek their interests and support. And that's how we need to reach out. But that's a bit short answer. Of course, we can speak longer, but there's no time. So next question. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Sikyong, uh, my question has 
Uh, Mr. Sikyong, my question has to do with uh, the Tibetans living in Sichuan and Qinghai. The Chinese claim over Tibet says that Tibet has been part of China since the Yuan Dynasty, and in my opinion, that is not true. Central Tibet and Utang was not part of uh, China ever. However, the Tibetan areas of Qinghai and Sichuan have been under Chinese rule since at least the Yuan Dynasty. So. How does the Tibetan government in exile justify its claim over the Tibetan areas in Qinghai and Sichuan? Mm. Throughout history, every nation has its relation with neighboring countries. There have been incursions, there have been wars between neighboring countries. And the same thing happened with Chinese and Tibet. Right. When the Manchus started coming into Tibet, that was in 1720s, and that is when Qinghai and the Sichuan, part the east of Tishu River, became, in a way, separate, not under the Gandengporang government or the central Uzang government. Right? So they became separate, but that also does not necessarily mean to say that they came under Chinese influence because they were autonomously managed by Tibetans. Qinghai was Amdo region, right? Including Nangcheng today. The Kamgi Nangcheng Zoyin and Qinghai Na Yore. And Amdo Gangzang Qinghai Na Yore. In a Dinanola Pyonzog Simde Yorwa. They may be paying some tax to the Chinese authorities. But administration is done essentially by the Tibetans. Then again, you have this parallel of the local chieftains and the lamas, right? And when it comes to the grassroots administration of these bodies, if you compare the chieftains and the lamas, lamas are more powerful. Because lamas zo tse dici ni ge jam nerwa, chieftain zo mese dici gorwa. And all these lamas are linked to the central monastery in central Tibet. Ula, Udan, Sangla, you go, Saja in a Kaju in a Ningma in a Gilu in a Tangu Tarsa, the Unin Taroa. Then it went to other periods. So, this is parallel to the Sangmayor, but just because those areas were not part of Kandemporan government for some time does not necessarily mean to say that they are not Tibetans. Because the Chinese law says that if it's a people who live in contiguous territory with the same culture and language, they are the same people, right? Again, history now. Ben Jagada was in in mid 18th century. East India Company came to India. They invaded India, but in 1947, 200, 250 years later, India became independent. That does not mean to say that. เออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออเออ
Ani ngat sungu ni capcu ta capcu refugee cang na lungu ta talu ni tuk ciri ngas dugu yore. Tanda ina poko na pe mesi kangar yore. Ani kalau gula na ani ngat sungu ma jarum buci to cengshu pujang ke longshok rongzira. Tanda ina jarum buci ke gongja. Tu ibu nur ke jace tongza be nyimpen rumi lam ke tanda ngat sungu cengshu pujang ke longshok de rumi lam yang di tampala ani rumi lam ke tak ni kalau gule. Tanda ni mampu cikgu, kami lama zina, ani nangat di daya res, ani cik kalau guru cik jawab rumput cik dong, ani cik secong, pujang dah, dengar tu cik jaga rej, ani kami lama kita ni, ani cik selak la, jamila, cak semua zui omar es, cik kalau jamila betul kalau guru ni ingkir dengar peba ya na, tu cik nukir omar es, dengar tu nang alam tu, kau yang sini nang alam ingkir pun cik mati percaya juga re, tapi ngarong Bapa saya ini bicara ni, orang orang gay ni orang, tenjut zaman orang orang ini orang orang gay, drau musim betul ni, ini salah kereta bawa turun turun ke jangan orang zaman kau lah, siwi gong ni jauh rumput si gong je orang orang longshok tak orang gay, dah ubo la orang orang tu, bukan orang dah jauh rumput si gong je, kau yang sini ni siwi ni tu siwi jima tu, siap jual tu jauh ibu jenar cak dia orang, tenjut zaman la ini orang orang gay betul ni, simbala tenjut si mampu si orang tenjut la dia tu, ini Ngah tanda balok la linki pen ada, ani ngarong ke pala malah ada, ama mela kaku zuri pala ni koji cap zuri ngarong ini tanda pok na am dong awa zurgi ni re, ani tanda ini talu ni tang ni sih sabji ke jeda ni pagi pok losar ke teri jela, ani ni ama ngala country bicara dengan la la dewa raksan la, ani ngasu nolak la ni tak pa antara lessons, ani Chorongi Pogade Shijalangba La Yore Ani Chorongi Pogade Ani Kharzina Gatu Pola Leya Ghe Kuron Lan Dupai Yuna Ani Ngatsu Ghe Nyentak Pai O Police Office Ghe Fantang Ashaq Da Ani Visa Che Go Tinda Nga Ama Ghe Lap Sang Ani Kuron Tsu Ghe Nga La Ngatsu Blanket Ghe Ora Tinda Ji Kutre Sang Lap Sang Ama Ghe Kharja Na Chorongi Pogade La Lo Sarpa La Da Ji Nyempa Do Zina Ji Tinda No Lap Kandura Ani Kharzo Jidda Sampa Ghe Tere cewa jed na jila ni nge pala ga amala lam na da ngala kalab gore de Kongso ki pala la anja lab sha churong ki bhuk de Shijal lang pala Ani ga sakpa dhen da tsik na ngot tra na da ni likha yakpo cha ga mendoos Dhen di dhan pala ani te la kalab gore Ani te la kongso la ngala lab Dhen da lab sha ani nomi la yena da di si ji kanga do tra dek dora Yena da di chetong ga da nge de churong Pemi saya cukup dah sejam yang bicara ni, cakap sih tuan dewa ibu tuan yang orang kita dengar cerita ni terus. Ani jempa cik karela na ngatu ki ngatu sama cakap cerita ni. Ani ngatu sama la cik pukul nang si kangar yore, rongong gugu yore, pukul nang dua meter tuan gugu yore. Tapi ini zaman bala pukul nang tanda ni tuan de dige dige cakap de yore. Tapi ini zaman bala ni tanda ini ni tuan ni sabi juga jeda ni pak sebab teri cingi la ani amdo ngawa Chongchir ni pok jiwa Ani kurang ni jik jam Kurang ni jik jik tom re Ani kurang ni jik nolak la Da tuwa kare la na Jarkab mesa ke jarkab chik ke nolak la Ngut tseng ma Zima re is Ani da gano chik Ngatsu po murik zu jundi Jana ke muk nolak la Mpa nang shi re is Da dindra jini kurang ni jik Tom na kurang jeda Dik jeda sempa ke tari chik ni ni kurang Tadi jam itu nyentak pagi kurang sunat jisya yore ta, tindak jinak angar yore. Ti masih tanda yang cah ni makah sih segala orang am do ngawa kiri gumpal lah, ani trawa kurang mana pema, ani kurang ke jawa rumbu cingko, darpan cikir na, ani ngatur trawa jana lah, siwi lingke pena kurang yang tanda kengir jisya yore. Tindak angar jisya dey yore, tindak zaman lah ngatur ke rongol lomba ke di nolak lah, cik sabat tindak mampu cik cik dek do, ani sabat cik na ni Cik kalau tu, papa ke nongker lah cik kalau tu ni tau cina. Cik moni ke ngasuh ke sabat tu kan? Jarak tu mungkin kita ngasuh ke capture yang dia ngasuh lang genting juga. Jauh rumah cik tanda rumah pola dendri si gore pola moni ke dirce ke ni macam cik syar gugur yana. Tindak ke gawat ni ngasuh lingkir kat si mangga penna. Ani dia cik penya re tanda sanggup tu ngasuh ke lingkir sabat mampu tu kan? Negeri sabat dia ke papa ke nolak lah cik 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 tumbu. Tumbuh no cahaya ke dendak ke nyengkan cik ni Ngarong ni dendak cik tong dek do Ani jimpa yon jengji mayim bin sakpa Ngas yora 
Dinoloni, Unigo, Carlo Tanda, Lu Chonga Nishigana, Sapa de Suchi, Unigo, Jerkop, Murig Digit, Nima Tapa Lingi Pay and Rodenda Yun, Tanda Lu Chonga Nishigola and Sapa de Su, Chapsi, Jandrima, and Sapa de Soyon, Kalaguri, Ting Ude, Chinsa Chapsha, the Dendaji Cha, or Dendaji in the Dilani, Sjongla, Karina, Jason of the Tijiche. That's what Tamadi, Sweet, thank you, Chigua. Sweet, thank you, Gare, Tana, and Dele Chigua. Lasso, Tomatilla, Testele, Niming Latin, the Chansum Sugar, and Tandechala, Pur Conjunction de Linki, Pugigi, the Rishulutina, Gigin Chinulu, doing the last Chichin so, and Tangran to the Tiwati, she went in Zing on La Chagito, and a Tangran to Yina Chuche and La Luchun Chebani, Nara Kuche Sugiura, and Narangi Tash Karishimba. Yam Yung Kari Chumba, Susula Kari, the Chunduk of Susula Kogap de Kari Mara with that Pudu Chuma Sola Rana, then teaching Ranki Kirki, that Susu Lega Chusu Guan in our Tawa, Dangawa Nikon, that say Chusu Chu the Chagapoto, a book sola Niki, quoting in the Tiki Ura, and a quoting in the De Hal Lebegi Kitchen with Naran Kirki Soki to Kayashuna Nyang Mata Matawe, Roko Manguchi. Lego Legane Matu Lega Shodu Yuri, Kaishuna, Rangugi, Tugo, Tugo, and the automation Mangu Yungu Yurua, and the coding Bootsola, Shetcha Yundin, the great, the Hal Lebeki Kitchen, which Maran Gergi said to you, Tennyson, the Tatandangazu, they look to Rankuran, Nangolo, look to Nishutsam, and ye coding in the Tia Koka Chunso, Kranzo, and the Lona Gudang, Lona Chushi Par, and Tanda Pueta. Pudun, the Jewigi, Goche, Mangochi, the Sushin by Yins Chishui. Tati, Nyet, and the Shuedi, Nasems of Chishu, the Kawalin, Gudu Shuna, Tanda Yaga, La Shupe, Pudu Chunga Sola, the Koran Sola di, and a Kogap di Yunas, Tanda Lopsinki, Sambode Lopte Nangla, Lopsin Tempe Nangla, and Tanda Chuche Sudan, Kodinki, and it's Lopsin the Tempe Nang Yuna. And Tanda Yan Chashi, the Kawali Yuna, and the Chicksun Rona, the Tati, Tiwa the Noma Loyani, Tiwa the Kuria Chunso, and the Yan Tande Chala, Kawali, you made in Yeshema, so and the Kuji, Mazula, Angala Surona, and the Ashuinira, and in the Tantati, Pukutsugi, Tanda Kuchi, the Zota, Mutun, the Crown, the Peta Pedentua, so the Sushin by Yins Chinshui, got in Che. First of all, I just want to say uh, I thought your talk was really insightful, um, and I want to say thank you for that. Uh, uh, this is relating to what you were saying about um, us feeding the dragon uh, as like mm. a Western culture. Um, I was curious, how do we, fr um, from a Western perspective, move away from our dependence on China's economy? Um, that we depend on so heavily for like um, the cheapest phones, all the iPhones are made there. Um, everyone I know that's my age uh, has ordered something from Amazon or Timu or whatnot. Um, one strategy I can think of off the top of my head is like raising taxes or tariffs. Mm. But um, the problem with this is that they're still getting our business and uh, the dependency is still there. Uh, are there any alternatives that you can see to this problem? Thank you. Yeah. Thank <coughs> The ones who don't understand middle way or who want to discourage middle way, they speak about those things that, oh, if you follow middle way, Chizang, 
Kanang anzuki kasha digi. We use our mind to explore how do we gain leverage for middle way. So it's not like you know, if you follow middle way, you just stay at home and don't do anything, don't do any protest, don't go to Chinese embassy. Tika jam mare. Omega Tony ne lingupe mango yore in a cousin labanashi, Ganan Shungzo Shimba in a gather the Zometa Matangs. If you burn Chinese flag, the Chinese government use it to tell the Chinese people that the Tibetans are burning the national flag of PRC, which again we create more enemies. Gamigi Semnal or Pavatika de Petuk Jarashale, Samlo de Kosu Soju Guyarwa. You do it in a right way. Send the ma- message across. Can I show you doing a game with Chinese degree? Need to shin a degree in a doshia, Tarja Medatanga, the Zutanga de Majela, or that would hurt the sentiment of millions of Chinese, and then we create more enemies instead of supporters. I think you some other injimiji di Cheo Resta, Pernano, Ben and Tana Krang, the Krang, the Sundu Samangazo, the video gap there. I was not sure whether that the life to the Yurwa. We do live to go. Live to go with the Quran Sundu, some of Quran, and the Pern Allah, Nezu Sundu, dear Konsuta Derda. Wherever I go, the Chinese government is watching all the time. As I speak now, they are listening because all of all are going live. The Indu Quran, Nangmile, Kang and Teg and Yanga Yore, he got up and he came here. This name is Tani Pugenala, my Jemna, some land. Quran Tiwa, the Pugenal Tiwa. They are watching everything, wherever we go, whatever we are speaking about, they are always listening. So this is another form of reversal of transnational repression. Because the Tibetans who are outside here, they try to put pressure by saying, if you don't, if you go and protest, then you will not get visa to go to Tibet. That's the ultimate weapon of the Chinese government, not to grant visa right, to go to Tibet. <coughs> and they, the Chinese government always try to entice people to come in to Tibet, influence them, pay money or use influence, give them visa, do something so that these people will turn around and then be favorable to, to the Chinese government. That is their expectation. But we know that this doesn't work with everybody. But there are Tibetans within the Tibetan community who loves money. So not all Tibetans are the same, right? Then you do some same and the the we know. Pula Nangmi Yugonzo Chige La Pinga Yuna Pugu Yuna cause the address someone lengi or they try to get address of every Tibetan who is living outside Tibet who are related to Tibetans inside Tibet. Then they tell the relatives inside that if you don't ask your son or daughter or your brother, sister, whoever that is, in the foreign countries not to be active. Active Chebaina, you guys inside Tibet are going to suffer. That's how they use, you know, the the uh, reversal of transnational repression. The chigi are the tanda kurang sungba dembare na jo ha kugore ani she tangye pugudi ge ta pyo ta bunu shin chigi are. The double jiare kana ge when it comes to United States, they always say, oh, United States is not treating us equal. But when it comes to Canada, does the Chinese government treat Canada as equal? Never. With, even with India, they don't consider India as equal. So, although everybody is an independent country by themselves, whether you are big or small, and China never does that. One important thing that you spoke about, there are too many organizations now in exile uh, in the diaspora community, and all these are becoming divisive in many cases not doing the things that they should be doing, not focusing on what they need to do, but doing other things that creates more problem within the community, whether it's to do with regionalism or religious factors or whatever. So you young people need not 
Spiritualism is up to the individual as to what you want to do. It cannot be forced on anybody. Right? Whether you follow this particular tradition or that particular tradition, it should not become a point of conflict. Right? We don't have even a handful of soil in our hand or land in our hand. What do we fight for? No. First, we have to seek a resolution. And when we get to go back to Tibet, then we can talk about other things. Even me, as a Sikong, right now, when I think about possible solutions for Tibet, I think about all the three provinces, not just one province. That's why I also say, since we came into exile, this 14th Dalai Lama managed to create an identity of Tibetan national identity of all the three provinces together, despite the question that came from the other gentleman who asked the second question, which is very relevant also historically to understand our perspectives. That is why I keep saying you have to go back to history and understand all those things. So these organizations, whatever is coming up, should not be a cause of divisiveness. They should be focusing more on what they need to do for the common cause of Tibet. Right. So all we are trying to do is to create a common uh, curriculum for all the schools under TCV or homes or some border. But uh, the one that you are dealing with, I'm not sure whether it's there in the, because you are talking about eight to nine to fourteen years old. Tenzo lo tuji gri swe tenzo tenga di. But if it's not there, if these are some things that need to be introduced which are useful for the Tibetan young Tibetans, we can always think about all this and you can also, you know, maybe we can, uh, uh, there would be time when the education minister can come here, all the recommendations that the, um, the, the principal gave this morning also, I'm going to forward to the education department and I'll add your suggestion also in that. The name feeding the dragon, ki the dependence on Chinese economy. Now all we are saying is, what the Biden administration is doing right now is very strategic. You know, because what they feel as, as a competition coming from China on space technology, on uh, high-end microchips, or uh, quantum computing, all these areas, military, you know, hardware and software, all these things, China is able to spend on all these things because of the foreign exchange they have. That's why I talked about the $3.6 trillion worth of foreign exchange reserve they have, which they were talking about a year ago, but now they don't come out with the numbers because it's for sure that the number is depleting. So U.S. strategy, not just cutting China off from these high-end products, because even as we speak, I think the U.S. delegates are going to Netherlands to speak with the Netherlands governments not to service the missionaries, the lithograph missionaries that they supply to the uh, Chinese government, which they have already supplied. Of course, in future, U.S. is already working with Netherlands and Japan and South Korea because these are the four countries that has this specialty in supplying missionaries to produce high-end microchips, right? So all these things are going on. So now the trade imbalance between United States and China, that is what United States government is trying to control, the trade imbalance. And I spoke about the trade imbalance between China and the European Union yesterday or this morning, I forgot, but the, the whole 27 nations of European Union are s exporting only 200 billion US dollar worth of goods and services to China, 
and China is exporting 600 billion to the European Union. So every year you're talking about 400 billion trade deficit between the European Union and China. So with all these trade deficit, China gains in terms of foreign exchange and then they splurge it on Belt and Road Initiative, creating all these dead economies, spending it on space technology, robotics, quantum computing, everything. And we are actually facilitating them by giving them more business. So my contention is when I, when I speak to the Europeans, I tell them we follow non-violence. Now if you supply ammunition to Ukraine, then the only way is they have to fight if you have weapons. So you either kill the Russians or the Russians kill you, which is violent in any way, both sides, both sides will anyway lose, right? What we are suggesting is that if you have to follow a non-violent means of containing China, give them less business. Then they won't have this foreign exchange reserve to splurge it on all those things, plus buying all from Russia. So I tell the Europeans, you are indirectly sustaining the war in Ukraine by giving too much business to China and China buys oil from Russia and Russia gets this income to sustain the war in Ukraine. And that is the best way to deal in a non-violent way. That's our suggestion. So if you reduce the trade imbalance, then China will not have that extra money to splurge it, right, to spend it. And that is what I feel is a good non-violence way of doing things. So, of course, dependency. Dependency depends on how much cheap products you are getting. And I also focused on China trying to reach out to the global south. Now, the problem is how much capacity does the global south in terms of purchasing power compared to the United States or Europe? They don't have. So, China has splurged extra production of, of so many goods and now they have no market to sell so they are selling it to the global south in the poor countries in latin america and africa the reason why their export went up to 8.7 percent last month was because there was an increase of more than 20 percent export to latin america and africa and 12 percent increase to india that's why the average went up but if, you, if Chinese government floods all these global south countries with their cheap products, it's going to kill all their small-scale industries. Because they, wouldn't be, they won't be able to compete with the prices that are coming for the goods that are coming from China. Only then will they realize that they are in deep trouble. So we have to start speaking about it now. Then they know, because you don't need omniscience, Karsadi, Ngoshe you just need your intelligence to work out how this is going to shape up in the next few years, right? And if you keep telling them now, then they will say, oh, the Tibetans have been saying this for a long time and we didn't listen to them, right? And these are very simple economics. You don't need rocket science to understand all this, right? Even Canada has, except for a few countries like Japan, Taiwan, New Zealand, Australia, most of the countries have trade deficit with China. And that is where we have to hit. Okay. To China. That's how long. To what do I get it? Thank you, Sikyongla. Um, to conclude our talk, I'd like to invite Yishila, who is the fundraiser coordinator, uh, to deliver the final notes. Tuchina, ani thama di tuchina masunila tanda sigun lagi kalam na ona ne ngaragi sam sovajerwa ona na kung lagi. If we don't study Tibetan history, who else will study it? Rwa di jikson rwa di sam sobu chungso. Anim do danda kungulagi presentation nang do dinala ngozugi geopolitically how significant Tibet is. Then ngozugi di roa presentation di ngozu kanchun di ling office ni lene digri everyone should have it. Roa ani sikim pempa chiring la we extend our deepest gratitude for sharing your wisdom and experience with us today. 
Your words have resonated deeply with our youth, igniting a passion for positive action and inspiring us to be the change we wish to see in the world. Thank you very much, Sikyo and Prabhupada Nila. It's lunchtime now. As we leave, can you guys please uh, stack up the chairs for us, please? Thank you.